Johnny Depp. Narcissist or Empath. Part 10. Hello. I'm H.G. Tudor. We now continue the examination of the evidence, the mountain of which exists, to make a determination as to what Johnny Depp is. We now turn to philanthropy and also the views of others about Depp. Depp made a voice message for a 17-year-old British girl who had been in a coma for five months. Parents of the girl asked him to tape a voice message because he was the favourite actor of their daughter. And they hoped playing the message every day would help wake her up. As an advocate for Sophie's Gift, a growing database of celebrity messages aimed at helping coma patients and raising funds for crucial hospital equipment, Depp was touched by the letter and said he would do whatever he could to help. Another moment at his induction to the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Johnny Depp wore Dustin's memorial bracelet, the Children's Hospice and Palliative Care Coalition, a social movement led by children's hospitals, hospices, home health and grassroots agencies, and individuals to improve care for children with life-threatening conditions and their families. Similarly, Depp supports Helen Douglas House, a registered UK charity providing respite and end-of-life care for children and young adults with life-shortening conditions, as well as support and friendship for the whole family. Depp donated underwear to a charity auction benefiting Helen and Douglas House. The winner bid $3,000. In response to a scare within his own family, in March 2007, he, denoted, he donated $2 million to the great Ormond Street Hospital in London, which treats children who are suffering from the rarest, most complex, and often life-threatening conditions, as thanks for the treatment his daughter Lily Rose received at the facility after contracting an E. coli infection that caused kidney failure. In 2006, he received the Courage to Care Award in recognition of his contributions to the Children's Hospital Los Angeles, which provides seriously ill children with medical care from some of the country's best doctors, regardless of their family's ability to pay. Depp sent a shirt, which he wore in the Libertine to a British fan after she wrote to him, asking him to donate something in aid of charity. He autographed items for an auction to benefit Julian House. Inspired by his charity work, his fans have founded a group called Johnny's Angels, Depp Fans for Charity. The group focuses on raising awareness and funds for children's hospices, in particular the Children's Hospice and Palliative Care Coalition. Depp also works with Actors Fund of America, Annual Duesenberg Imperial Ball, Children's Hospital Los Angeles, Dogs deserve better. Better than stepping on a bee, I guess. Environmental Justice Foundation. Great Ormond Street Hospital. Helen Douglas House. Julian House. Much Love Animal Rescue. Northampton Welfare Rights Advice Service. Orca Network. Parkinson Society Maritime Region. Project Home. Ronald McDonald House Charities. Sophie's Gift. The Art of Elysium. Unite for Japan, and War Child. Just some examples of the philanthropy of Johnny Depp and the charitable causes that he supports. That would suggest the presence of emotional empathy, caring, compassion, decency, honesty. Of course, though, Many individuals who are narcissists donate to charity, give up time, support causes, and they do so, of course, because it allows them to assert control over people. It allows the gathering of fuel. It allows the gathering of character traits and, of course, provides the residual benefit of facade management. Just by way of example, Ted Bundy volunteered at a suicide hotline and was regarded by most people that worked there 
as a decent and helpful individual. Just because somebody engages in charitable and philanthropic works does not mean, per se, that that makes them an empathic individual. It raises the suggestion that they are, but when combined with other evidence, it could be seen as simply facade management and, of course, achieving other aspects of the prime aims. On the face of it, his involvement in these charitable enterprises and the philanthropy does suggest that he has emotional empathy. But we need to look at it in the context of all of the evidence to see if that position is altered. Further examples include a nine-year-old Beatrice wrote to Johnny Depp asking him to assist in throwing a mutiny over her teachers. The actor showed up to the London primary school to do just that, only he told the kids to stay at school and learn. Maybe we shouldn't mutiny today, because there are police outside monitoring me. Back in 2009, season two of the popular TV show This American Life approached Depp to voice the thoughts of an American male who was unable to read them himself. Who should we get for your voice? The question was posed of the individual. Ed Norton or Johnny Depp? It was kind of a throwaway, but Norton was in New York and I figured he was a good guy, so we went to him and he turned us down cold. Three weeks before filming ended, the network president, Bob Greenblatt, said, Have you tried Johnny Depp? And we said, No, no, no. Oh my God, we didn't think we had a chance. But he got his manager's number, called and heard back in five minutes. I explained it as easily as I could and pasted Mike's lines into an email, and I made it clear we weren't doing the sad cripple story. That made sense to Depp. It took him all of five or ten minutes to do the lines. It was the easiest get ever. After production staff were affected by cold weather while filming at Buckinghamshire's Pinewood Studios, Depp stepped in to provide waterproof hiking jackets for everyone. A crew member said Johnny paid out of his own pocket for all 500 of us to have a nice warm waterproof. It's a great morale boost and another example of why he is one of the nicest people in Hollywood. Is this financial largesse which is being utilised for the purposes of assertion of controlled and facade management or is it a huge example of generosity predicated by his emotional empathy? Note the reference from the individual of the crew who stated that it's one of the reasons why he's one of the nicest people in Hollywood. Is he one of the nicest people in Hollywood by dint of emotional empathy? Or is it the case that this has arisen because he's very careful about how he manages his facade? Johnny donated a guitar autographed by Captain Jack Sparrow for Little Grey, the boy Grayson Alexander Arroyo, who was born in 2000 and in 2006, was diagnosed with a brain tumour. At the Voices for Justice rally in Little Rock, Arkansas, Depp was trying to bring attention to the imprisoned men known as the West Memphis Three, Damien Eccles, Jason Baldwin and Jesse Miss Kelly. I'll be returning to the issue of the West Memphis Three in due course. But on the face of it, again, that looks like the exhibition of emotional empathy. Depp donated in 2013 $25,000 to the Navajo Nation to be used for college scholarships. Mr. Depp's generous donation is anything but paltry, since it can assist the cost of post-secondary education for many, many students. It is a kind gesture from an unselfish individual, a representative of the Navajo Nation explained. Driving near the city of Austin, Texas, on the set of What's Eating Gilbert Grape during a downpour, Depp came across a homeless woman. He offered her a lift and gave her every cent he had on him. In a visit arranged by the Make-A-Wish Foundation, he brought a terminally ill 11-year-old girl to the set of Ed Wood and hovered over her the entire day. He said to wander at four or five in the morning outside the Viper Room, the Sunstrip, Sunset Strip Club that he once owned, and hand out 50 $100 bills to the destitute huddled on the sidewalk. Geraldine Palias said of him, we were like kids on the beach. Johnny gives a lot, and he knows how to listen. I really had his eyes, you know, very pure, very special. 
Martin Palmer, a journalist in a 2004 interview, stated, If you talk to the people who work with Depp, like Mark Foster, the director of Finding Neverland, Kate Winslet, others on the small-budget British movie The Libertine, in which he plays the mad bad Earl of Rochester, they will all say the same thing. Depp is quiet, kind and funny. He hates being a movie star. He strikes you as a very gentle soul. Sarah Jessica Parker stated in 1993 as a co-star on Ed Wood, he's the star, but he's always running around asking if you need water or anything, and not just with me, but with the crew. He asks them if he can help carry cable. Joe Pistoni, the real Donny Brasco, stated in April 1997, Depp was so concerned that I was all right with it, he would ring me all the time and say, would you do this or would you say that? And then when it was finished, he refused to go and see it until I could go with him. Most actors wouldn't care. They would just grab the money and run. But he's not like that. Jean Rochefort stated, Johnny developed a strange empathy for my position during filming. I had a trailer that was a lot smaller than his. He demanded that I would get one that was at least as big as his. I was lying in the back of an ambulance that took me back to the nearest town when I saw an incredible convoy with their headlights on. It was the trailer for me. The actor, Geoffrey Rush, stated, Someone like Johnny is a great team leader. It's great not to have a diva. It's great to have someone who's very laid back, very playful. He's probably the only person who dares to ad-lib. A lot of what he throws in makes it into the final mix. Jack Sparrow is some crazy part of Johnny's brain. Julian Schnabel, the director of Before Night Falls, stated, Johnny was doing two other movies at the same time, but he showed up in the middle of all that, and he wouldn't let me pay for anything either. I mean, he worked for free, and, he said, just put it on the screen. Michael Singer, the unit publicist for the second of the Pirate movies and the author of Bring Me That Horizon, stated, On set, Depp projects a warm, gentle kindness and accessibility that mark him as the true Kentucky gentleman and terrifically devoted family man that he is. His natural charisma also illuminated the proceedings with a special light that created a unique atmosphere whenever he was working, or is that Captain Jack Sparrow's charisma? Because in the middle of a work day, it was impossible for anyone, perhaps himself least of all, to know where Johnny Depp ended and Captain Jack began. And vice versa. For the nearly two-year period between the start of the production on Dead Man's Chest to the final wrap of At World's End, Johnny Depp's smile was the same as Captain Jack's, with the character's trademark curled and silver teeth bonded onto his own. Multiple praise for Depp exhibiting what appears to be kindness, compassion, decency, honest, the giving of both time and money, and doing so in a humble fashion. This points to many empathic traits and also supports the presence of emotional empathy, but it might also be that a particularly skilled narcissist, one that has a very good control over ignited fury and the ability to weave a particular facade, could con so many people into thinking that they were a kind and decent individual. It does happen. Again, we must look at all of these bouquets thrown in Depp's direction within the context of all of the evidence to make a determination. But on the face of it, those are ringing endorsements that suggest the presence of emotional empathy and empathic traits. Of course, as you know, mine is a dispassionate, objective review of the evidence, and whilst I have, from the material, identified much praise for him, it also has to be the case that we look to see if there is any damning evidence about his characteristics and behaviours. And indeed, it exists, and, as we have identified, there is a considerable body of supportive and constructive and appreciative evidence with regard to Depp's character and behaviours, but there is also a significant body of condemnation and criticism. We examine this in part 11. Join me there.